Okay, so I can just start any time? Yeah. Okay, I am Evelyn Wong and I am an artist. Okay, there's a guy behind you, but I'm gonna head around him. I do botanicals right now. Uh, it's kind of my focus to do things that I like, you know, things I grew up with, things I'm comfortable and familiar with. Um, botanicals is one of those things, you know, I grow, grew up, you know, doing gardening with my mom. Plants was kind of one of those things I decided on because I had influence from growing up, you know, being surrounded by uh, the works of Chinese watercolors. My mom was really, you know, she really exposed me to a lot of images in traditional Chinese watercolors. And so when I was in college and I had to study, you know, they always make you pick that one thing, you know, what major are you going to be in? What, what thing are you going to study within that major? And um, for my thesis project with the Honors College, you know, we had to pick a subject and I, I was like, well, you know, I grew up around plants and I grew up around Chinese watercolors, you know, why don't I see about, you know, taking the two things and then combining it into one. I want to say it was around November or December 2012 and I first heard about this thing that they were calling, they were making calls to artists for this thing called Art Fields and it was going to be in April 2013 and so they made the call late in 2012 for it. Um, apparently what it was was um, Darla Moore herself, you know, was kind of sponsoring or hosting, helping to host the event. So I wanted to see what else the, the town was about and um, that was when I started digging around and I discovered Moore Farms Botanical Gardens, which as it turns out is actually her own private, I guess, garden. Um, and she's got all these people, these horticulturists, uh, who are there to actually do research on growing things. In Colombia, you know, there's a couple of very generic things and then you go out of town, of course you want to find something new, you know, it's kind of like I don't know, kind of like going out, of, going out of town and just eating out of Chick-fil-A, you know? It's like, why would you do that? So I come here, and because they plant so many things here, I try to find stuff that I can't find at home. And this one, I just like it because you don't really see this here around town. We were walking around in, in uh, Moore Farms. You, know, you saw the rose mallow all over the place, and it was, and there were just all around the pond, and there's just all these big blooms and you know of course I had no idea what they were at the time and I couldn't help but you know just really notice it and pay attention to that one you know so again you know it's it's the form the structure of something you know what about it you know to me stands out and to me it was really the form the shapes that it had so right now I'm still kind of working on the structure a little bit it's funny, I actually don't know names of a lot of these things, and so I guess that's kind of where where studying comes in, you know, I have to, I kind of have to go out of my way a little bit to learn what some of these things are, because I'm not a, you know, I'm not a gardener, I'm not a, I grew up in a garden, but, you know, I'm not a, exactly a gardener, and it's funny, because a lot of things that I see, um, I guess a lot of more common things that I see, you know, I'll actually know the name in Chinese and I have no idea what the English name is. Like, I have no idea what the English name is, I don't know what the Latin terminology for it is, or the, the scientific terminology, I have no idea what some of that is. Whenever I go outside, I like being able to hear the environment, the, uh, the environment around me. Um, I like being able to, to hear the birds, the, the crickets, you know, sometimes the bugs zipping around, bees, you know, if, sometimes if there's a stream or something or a brook. There's actually been at least two drawings I can remember right offhand where I was working on it and it just starts to rain on me and, you know, I just let that be part of the thing, you know, and it's, it's nice to hear that, it's nice to be able to feel that. Depending on what kind of outcome I want. I'm going to take photographs a lot of times. I prefer working from life. I hate working from photograph. I absolutely hate it. And I know though, if I don't take photos, you know, if I try to come back to it tomorrow, you know, it might have died. It might have stopped blooming. It might have changed. You know, there's some plants that grow really fast too. And so if I come back the next day, it'll probably have completely changed. I'm not really good at working from photograph and I've been getting better at it. Of course, the more you do it, you know, the better you get. I'm more of a person who works better um, as I'm looking at something, you know, live while it's there. Kind of like, you know, if you have a still life set up and you're working with a still life versus taking a photo of the still life and coming back and working from photo, um, you have a really different uh, perspective on things. You know, a camera, as you, you know, when you record with a camera, you're really recording a two-dimensional image.
I guess one of my one of my influences, Scott Abbey, but he was one of my he was one of the the closest friends I've ever had. You know, growing up, um, he was you know he was definitely one of my biggest supporters, one of my biggest fans. Um, and whenever he passed, you know, about a couple years ago, um, it was kind of a you know kind of a blow to me, you know, and he he had leukemia, and um, that was that was kind of a long, really hard battle with him. And it was just really hard for me, you know, as a, I guess as a friend, you know, sorry, it's, it's kind of personal to me, you know, it's, <sighs> he was one of those people who really drove me to um, do what I do now. Everyone's lives that he touched, you know, he just left such a mark on, on everyone. How great would it be if I could do the same thing for someone else, you know, and the things I want to do is really, be able to help other people who were in the same boat as me. You know, a lot of times we talk about artists being broke, being poor. We don't have supporters, you know, we don't have this, we don't have that. You know, and a lot of times it's because we don't know where to go. And, you know, one of the things I want to do is hopefully one day to start a school or program where I'm actually helping other aspiring artists, you know, students, young people, um, you know, middle high school, college age students who really are passionate about art and they really want to do something about it. And I want to be able to start a program to help them to, you know, really become artists and pursue their passions, but still being able to do, you know, to help other people as well. And I really, I've, I've spent so much of my, my childhood in a garden and, you know, it's just really familiar, comfortable subject matter for me. Um, when I was studying painting in college, one of the things we studied mostly was really figures, and I just absolutely hated figures, and it's not really something I've always wanted to do, you know, I, I can do the human figure, but I, I'm just not interested in it, you know. I connect more with, you know, things like botanicals that I grew up with, so it's a, I guess I chose it because it's a comfortable subject for me. <laughs> it's an odd statue, alright. <laughs> <laughs>